Well, in the light of what it is that I have been sharing, you know, the difference between outputs and outcomes, I think the way we need to evaluate ourselves uh, is in terms of outcomes. And I think one of the things, we're going to be talking a little bit about strategic planning a little bit later uh, in the context of this interview, I think. And, uh, but the point is that, you know, oftentimes we're planning for some immediate need uh, when we really should be planning for something that goes beyond our immediate need to what it is that we really are seeking to accomplish, not in terms of building a bigger facility, a more adequate facility perhaps, but in terms of outcomes. I I've told people for years that the difference between good and great in organizations uh, is almost inexpensive, if not totally free. Uh, I mean, oftentimes, if you look at an organization, if you look at a church, if you look at a school, a college, a university, a mission organization, we work with all of those kinds of organizations all around the world. And, and basically, they'll tell you, if I say, what is lacking in your organization, oftentimes it's something that's, that, that basically they think money can resolve. In other words, we need more buildings, we need more space. You know, in, in the era in which we've come from, you know, the fall of communism, the rise of of uh, capitalism in Eastern European countries and other places around the world. Uh, you know, we, we, we kind of want to emulate what it is that we see or they, quite a, they, they want to kind of emulate what it is that they've seen in America. That we need to have a mega church, we need to have, uh, you know, uh, satellite campuses all over the place and we need to be doing all these kinds of things that oftentimes happens in the United States. And I'm not suggesting that they're bad, but, but the realities are and I had this conversation actually this morning at breakfast, which I think was interesting. Uh, I was talking to a fellow from one of the Eastern European countries that had been under the bondage of communism for 70 years. And I looked at him and I said, you know what I, get? I, I, I bet? And he says, what do you bet, Jerry? And I says, I bet the church under communism was stronger and more vibrant and more effective than the church uh, under the, the current domain. And he says, you're absolutely right. And you see, you know, we think that, you know, all good things or all good times are going to make things better, but the reality is it's bad times that really produce character. I think that's where James says, you know, count it all joy when you fall into different kinds of trials, knowing this, that the trial of your patience, the trials that God presents you, actually produce character. And uh, when you stop and think about what's happened in China, uh, you know, in a place that was basically uh, forbidden to, to have public places of worship, you know, during the days of communism, they were underground, and, and today some of the most significant and most aggressive and most successful evangelical efforts in the world are basically taking place as the church comes out and basically continues their journey to, the, to Jerusalem. It's, it's an amazing, amazing story of how the church thrived despite the fact that it was basically trying to be put down.